hi there. It's been a while. Tell the truth, I simply sort of failed to conclude a project that I had been working on for a while. So after that failure, I decided to pursue something a bit more manageable. I figured that I'd like to learn how to program properly this time, as I'd like to one day be able to create my own game. It's kind of a bucket list item for me, and there's no better time to start than right now. So, of course, I started my programming journey from the only logical starting point, the basics of compute shaders. <laughs> On the basis of about 50 hours of using the software in my whole life, I decided to use Unity Game Engine for actually running my code, as I did not want to deal with the complications of actually getting something to render on the screen on my own. And I wanted the two projects I had in mind to be completed relatively quickly... The first project I had in mind was to create a Conway's Game of Life simulator. Original, I know. Actually, before I get ahead of myself, a little introduction to Conway's Game of Life and other cellular automata. Roll credits. Cellular automata, or a cellular automaton as singular, cellular meaning consisting of discrete units or cells, and automaton meaning a machine that acts automatically based on a set of rules. In Game of Life, and indeed many other cellular automata, the cells are usually pixels on a screen, the inputs are neighboring cells, and the instructions are, well, code. In this example, we have cells that are shaped as squares and they are arranged in a tiled pattern. Cells can be alive or dead, shown by the corresponding pixel being either lit up or not, the inputs to each cell are all the cells surrounding it, also called the Moore neighborhood of the cell, and the instructions are a simple two-part question. Firstly, am I alive or dead? And secondly, exactly how many of my neighbors are currently alive? Here's the set of instructions for a cell in Conway's Game of Life. Am I alive? Yes. Do I have two or three neighbors alive? Yes. Great. Or, am I alive? Yes, but no, I don't have two or three neighbors alive. Well, guess I'll die. Or alternatively, am I alive? Nope, dead as a rock. But are there exactly three neighbors alive? Yeah, congratulations, you are now alive. Or, no, not alive, and no, don't have three neighbors alive either. Well, then you remain more dead than a millennial's will to live. And that's it. If you repeat these deceivingly simple two questions for each cell at the same time, you end up with some mind-bogglingly complex behavior. I want to be able to see that behavior playing out on my screen. And yes, I could simply use something like golly, but where's the fun in that? So I embarked on the journey of learning how to write Game of Life with compute shaders. I followed a couple videos on YouTube, and soon enough, I ended up with a Serpiansky mesh, a colorful screen, a Mandelbrot set, and eventually a working Game of Life simulator. In addition, I was not satisfied with only simulating Conway's Game of Life, so the way I had set up the shader meant that the shader is capable of simulating every possible Game of Life-like two-dimensional cellular automaton. Essentially, it is possible to change the set of instructions that each cell executes. Changing the set of instructions can lead to some exciting changes, and some quite boring ones. I then figured that I'd also like to be able to change the speed of the simulation, the color of the cells, and finally I thought I'd throw in a way to make an animation sequence by changing the rules, speed or the colors while the simulation was running. All of this extra stuff ended up making a fairly delicious spaghetti that mostly behaves as expected. And if you'd like a taste of it, then the code is up on my GitHub. Links in the description. Regardless, to my surprise, I did end up making something that was actually kind of usable for once. 
So I decided to put together a little curated experience through the landscape of simple two-dimensional cellular automata. I hope you enjoy. It really should not come as a surprise that not only could you change the set of instructions each cell follows, but that it is also possible to change the way each cell gets their inputs, the shape of each cell, or indeed the dimensionality of the whole simulation. The second project I had in mind was to do with cellular automata a dimension lower than Conway's Game of Life. Simple one-dimensional cellular automata, also known as Wolfram's simple automata. Yes, that Wolfram. I wanted to be able to simulate any of the simple 1D cellular automata, and I wanted to be able to collect some information on sets of simulations. One would think that one-dimensional cellular automata are easier to code than two-dimensional cellular automata, but for some reason, this second project took nearly twice as long as the Game of Life simulator. I ended up rewriting the code for the simulator like four times, still hoping to utilize compute shaders for the actual simulation. But seeing that it takes over 80 seconds just to simulate 65,000 different boards, I finally decided to scrap the compute shader idea and learned about some multi-threading in C-sharp instead. Some quick learning and wailing at the keyboard later, and let's see the results. <laughs> you are without doubt the worst shader writer I've ever heard of. Anyways, I also added the possibility to view the input configuration to a cell, and also some capabilities to sum together the results from many different simulations at once. By the end, I was left with no ordinary spaghetti. This is threaded spaghetti. Noodles? Well, no matter the state of the code, it works for what I wanted it for. Pretty pictures and some data generation. If you were wondering about what kind of data I am generating, then consider this board. It shows linearly normalized sums for a set of random starting conditions for rule 30. Essentially, Similar shades of grey are alive for a similar number of times throughout the set of simulations. 
So now, for example, I wondered what happens if I simulate every single possible starting condition for a rule within reason and then did this sum. Well, it turns out that you get these stripey patterns. But what makes these stripey patterns? For some rules it's fairly trivial, for others less so. In any case, I am not sure if I will ever make a video exploring the properties of these cellular automata more in depth, but I guess time will tell. Unfortunately, or fortunately, that's all I've got for now. I hope the video wasn't too boring to sit through, and as always, if you got any questions, ideas, or extra knowledge concerning the topics shown in this video, then feel free to leave them down below as a comment. Make sure to like, or dislike, subscribe, or not, and I will see you next time.